What's the word, y'all? We've watched one game of every single series so far, and low-key, I'm a little bit afraid that we're about to get robbed. Because if you've been an NBA fan for some time, you know that we traditionally don't get a ton of great series in the first round. We might get a 4-5 that go to 7 that's very interesting, maybe a 3-6, but for the most part, there's, there's not a lot to talk about in, in the first round of playoffs traditionally. Now, this year has a lot of potential to see a bunch of different series go one way or another. It's not always just the top seed anymore. With that said, we saw three injuries today. Some of them, of course, weighted greater than others. But three injuries can potentially prevent us from seeing some all-time great series. Let's be real. The one I'm thinking about in particular is the John Morant one. Um, I think the Grizzlies and the Lakers series was one of the most intriguing series before it started because I could have saw it going either way. I want, I want to remind everybody, I'm a neutral fan. My Bulls have been gone for a few days now. So I'm watching all of this as just the basketball enjoyer trying to break break things down, dissect whatever. And and I've, I've made some appearances. I'll be real. I've made some appearances. And some of those appearances, I ended up picking the Grizzlies in seven. And some of those appearances... I end up picking the Lakers in seven. So, uh, I, like, my opinion about this series has changed from the moment we knew it was going to happen to now. I've, I've wished she washed. I wish she washed because I didn't really know. I can see it going both ways. Of course, with the John Morant hand, and as I'm recording this video, it is the third quarter of Denver Nuggets versus Minnesota. I've already decided that, that game is over. So, so, if the Minnesota Timberwolves have a crazy comeback, I guess we'll stitch that into this video. But as I'm recording this, we don't really know. You know, we found out that it's not broken, which is great because Tyler Hero literally broke his, and they got that notification fast. They, they sent him back to the, to the back room, and they're like, oh, it's broken. Um, and he's out 46, which is the entirety of the playoffs. But we know it's not broken for Ja, but he was already dealing with some injuries there, and we don't know about the ligament, the tissues, yada, yada, yada. And, and maybe by the time this video's out, we know, and we ain't got to even talk about the idea of Ja Morant not coming back. But if he doesn't come back, we're, we're legitimately getting robbed of something that could have been great. I mean, game one was about as fun as a game one can get. Okay, it was maybe the second most fun game. Maybe the third <laughs> most fun game one behind the Sacramento Kings to go to State Wars because that was a banger. And the Clippers' sons were the banger too. But LA versus the Grizzlies, we saw a lot of good things from both sides. But ultimately, the Lakers went on a crazy run down the stretch. Um, Austin Reeves is him apparently, and Rui Hachimura had the greatest game of his career, according to Desmond Bain. But we all know, if there's no John Morant, there's no chance. And one of the reasons why I was wishy-washy flipping here and there when it came to this series, because I believe that losing Steven Adams is as big as a loss you could get without obviously talking about a John Morant or a Jaron Jackson Jr. But when you compound that, with also the loss of Brandon Clark for the year. Like, with those two dudes being down, I thought they were going to be very crucial in guarding the, the Lakers, a team that gets to the basket and draw a ton of fouls. And shout out to Xavier Tillman because he hasn't been bad, but there's a reason why he was getting DNP coach decisions early this season because the two guys ahead of him at the center position were just better. And I think for this matchup, they would have been better. But now we take John Moran away. I'm like, bro, this series could have went a smooth seven. And without Ja, it's like, can they get one? Maybe. I mean, Jaron has been looking really good over the last couple months, but like one even might be a stretch without him. Again, I'm praying that Ja Moran is completely healthy or as healthy as he can be to participate at least. Because again, today he wasn't completely healthy, but he still had a stretch in that third quarter where he was taking the game off. You know what I'm saying? Um, so just some freak accidents between him and Giannis where somebody's coming over to try to draw a charge and they're trying to go over and uh, it's just, it's weird. I saw some people have some taste that, that we need to get rid of the charge completely, which is something I've never heard anybody argue, but it's an intriguing argument. I disagree, but I, I can understand why somebody would say that. And Taylor Jenkins did say in his post-game interview that, that Ja Morant's availability is in question right now. And again, I mean, if he's not, even if he's not there for game two, it's probably wraps. You cannot go down 0-2 when you had home court advantage. And then go to the Staples Center, the crypt, Staples Center, not crypto, and think that you can win that series and come back, especially with Anthony Davis at least being re relatively healthy. He said he's cool, and, and yeah, things like that. So, I don't know. I thought that series was going to be the best series out of the first round, and it might end up being one of the worst, depending on what Josh's health looks like. Let's talk about some of these other games, because uh, the Phoenix Suns are a team that I picked to win the Western Conference. They lost game one to the Clippers. Oh, man, the... Kevin Durant's Phoenix Suns era finally got their first loss, and it's a critical one. You wanted this first loss to happen in the regular season, definitely not game one of the postseason. We have home court advantage, and I would get a lot of credit to a few people. Obviously, Kawhi Leonard, an ultra robot. He played every single second in the second half. Again, 
um, doing great things. And if you look at the way he performed over the last couple months, I think he was player of the month for the last month of the season. You saw that he was ramping himself up for these type of moments where he could play a ton of games. The postseason is a little bit different for Kawhi because you know you're not getting back-to-backs. The best you're going to do is one day in between. And sometimes it's going to be two days in between. So he can afford to go out there and get you 40 minutes because he knows tomorrow's complete rest day and he's back. These are the type of wins that Clippers fans have been Warning me of all season long, even with no Paul George, you're going to have those games where EG is on, where Terrence Mann chips in, and Norman Powell come off the bench to do his. Kawhi almost had 40. You know what I'm saying? He did his thing. And at one point, they were in complete denial mode. Where they're like, you know what? Kawhi's killed us so much that we'll be willing to, to throw two bodies in. We ain't even got the ball. And let these other dudes, Eric Gordon and Terrence Mann, uh, win this game for him. And they came through. And you know who came through more than anybody, even though he shot three for 19 or whatever the statistic was? Russell Westbrook down the stretch. And I made a tweet that I think people are misinterpreting. I quoted that last play where he got the block and forced the ball off of Devin Booker. Again, a crazy uh, play to know the situation and make the right move. I quoted that saying one-of-a-kind player. Because I do not think there's many people in the history of basketball that can have a game that they shoot three for 19 and then still in the last couple minutes help win a basketball game with A, getting offensive boards, because I think that's where the Suns lost this game. Let's be real. We're going to talk about that in a second. But he got a big offensive board down the stretch that led to him getting fouled. He knocked down two free throws when he was shooting 66% from the free throw line all season long. And then on the defensive side, having that one-on-one with Book, getting the block and throwing it off him. And he do the thing, or was it this side saying he got a lot of heart? That's real. Because he was 3 for 19, and there were some ugly shots in there, y'all. But you look past all of that because he did what he needed to do in the end of this game to close it out. The Phoenix Suns, to be paying this, no, no, this, no disrespect to DeAndre Aiden, he's not the sole reason why they lost this game. But to be paying a man $30 million and he cannot grasp a rebound down the stretch has to be pretty demoralized. I'm looking at it, uh, he was third on the team in rebound and behind Chris, I didn't even realize that Chris Paul had 11 boards. Um, and then Kevin Durant also had nine, and then DeAndre Aiden had eight. Again, this is not, oh, DeAndre Aiden lost this game. But, like, down the stretch, you needed to secure a rebound, and there was a few possessions in the last couple minutes where they just did it. And I think that the biggest hold that we all knew that the Phoenix Suns were going to have to overcome to win a championship came to fruition today in game one, which might be scary. We might have to have a conversation about that later down in the series where we knew that their depth could be relatively questionable on a day-to-day -day basis. We got the games from Book, who, who, who in himself had a great defensive night and also had some big shots. Of course, he had to turn over and stuff down the stretch. But, like, he, he dove on the floor uh, quite, a, quite a few times, had the one going out of bounds where he threw it up for a layup at Torrey Craig where he did a lay that looked very LeBron-esque. And I'm like, that's just kind of crazy. Um, Book gave you a game. KD gave you a game. Aiden gave you about 20. Chris Paul hit two shots, and one of them shots was, like, the first shot of the game facilitator, whatever, old Chris Paul not look to score anymore. They got bench production and 10 points. That was what their bench production was. Well, on the other side, it was 34. I, I, it's it's, it's going to be tough to win that game because the Clippers are so deep. Where in this series, you're going to need your star players, your top four, to just have really, really good games where you can overlook some of that. And some of that was because Monty didn't trust them. You know what I'm saying? Not a lot of them got minutes. I was surprised to see Josh Okoge not get more than 10 minutes because I felt like post-trade, or I guess even before the trade, Josh Okoge was playing the best basketball of his young career. And I think he ended up with, what, six, seven minutes played today. So um, this is why I love the playoffs because we look at game ones, react to game ones, and then we, we got these coaches who are just the best in the world at what they do, where I know that Monty's going to make some changes, but also Tyron Lue is going to do some counter changes on some anticipation type stuff. So these playoffs, especially when you got teams that are close and, and talent, it's about the coaching down the stretch, and I think we got some good coaches, you know, trying to figure it out. Giving up 130 points to the Miami Heat, a team that was dead last in total points per game this season. A little bit scary for the Milwaukee Bucks. Not thinking that they're going to lose this series because I think Giannis is going to play and they'll be good. Um, and especially with Tyler Hero being now 4-6, to six, I don't expect the Miami Heat to shoot this well all series long. But the Milwaukee Bucks have been a team that's been running people off the three-point line all season long. And in the very first game in the playoffs, that team shot, what, 60% from three? Again, I don't think that's sustainable, but it's something we should maybe think about for round two or conference finals down the stretch. I was getting a lot of tweets about, like, Kenny, how can you not make a video yesterday? Because, again, that's, that um, Sacramento Kings versus Warriors game was elite. 
Um, yesterday was my daughter's birthday, and it was more about her, and I didn't really want to film. I just wanted to spend as much time with her as possible. Even I was watching that game. We were watching that game, but it wasn't like, sorry, babe, you know, happy birthday, but let's let daddy go and record this video real quick. It was like, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it was just an amazing game. Now, I don't even know what else I can really say other than De'Aaron Fox is crazy. Steph Curry is crazy. I saw some flack from Steph Curry for the last shot, but we got to look past that. You know, I think my boy Lowe had a tweet about it um, saying that Steph Curry had 12 points in the fourth quarter to even keep them in the game. It's not always about the last final shot to figure out what clutch means. I think clutch is exactly that leading up to these moments. And yeah, I mean, he missed a shot. That arena was jumping, bro. It was, it was everything and more. You know, we knew they was going to pack the house. We knew it. We knew it. It's a first playoff game in almost two decades. And, and they last time, I remember last time they were in the playoffs. It was crazy then, you know, and it's better now. You know what I'm saying? It was it was a great experience. Um, and the Kings ended up winning a game where the Monta Sabonis did not give them much on the offensive side. He did not give them much. He was missing bunny after bunny. And some of that is due to Draymond Green. Not some of that. I would say majority of that is due to Draymond Green and Kevon Looney's great defense. Uh, but, boy, to win that first game is crucial. Uh, I mean, the Warriors aren't a road team. They haven't been a road team. So maybe we shouldn't have been surprised with it. But it is the playoffs. And Wiggins was back, who looked kind of rusty here and there. Um, I'm sure he'll get it in, into gear eventually. Like, if I was going to show somebody who didn't know what basketball was, show them one game from the last... Well, I, can't, I don't want to get too hyperbolic. But if I could just show them one game, it might be that game. It had everything you could imagine. Clutch baskets, three-point shooting, like great defense from... The Loonies and the Draymond Greens, where you can point it out and talk about rotations, great passes. I mean, Draymond had a leading pass that was like, oh my God. So it was like almost the perfect game, especially for a neutral fan that heart wasn't beating out of their chest because they favorite team is in it. You know what I'm saying? And the Knicks took home court advantage. Um, and I was so surprised that Tom Thibodeau ran a full rotation that had nobody played 35 plus plus minutes. Like, we've seen a lot of teams across the league playing their best players 35 to 40 minutes already. This is game one. Tom Thibodeau's like, no. And that's the that's the antithesis of what Tom Thibodeau had been throughout the entirety of his career. Now, some of that's because Jalen Brunson got into foul trouble early, and then Julius Randle's coming off an injury, so you probably don't want to play him 40 minutes in a game one. But still, he trusted his other dudes down the stretch, which is which is different. I mean, the one thing that the, the Knicks have over the Cavaliers is that depth? The Cavs don't have that. Like, they relied on Dean Wade and, and Ricky Rubio to come off the bench. No, no, no. They don't have those quality players in New York. Everybody that's coming off the bench contribute in one way or another. And if they not, it's cool. We got the next person behind him that will. So that's the advantage that they got. And, I mean, we saw Jalen Brunson take over that game. Um, it was that third quarter or maybe early fourth quarter, whatever it was. A uh, great game. Evan Mobley for his first playoff game. Um, missed a ton of bunnies. And I, that might have been nerves across the board between him and Darius Garland, who struggled from the field. I think that this series, again, was going to be a really good one. Um, and game one did not disappoint. Oh, yeah, Josh Hart. An another team um, that struggled to get offensive boards down the stretch, literally. The last couple plays of game, they got an offensive board. And that's like Mobile and Jared Allen, who are one of the better uh, rebounding front courts in basketball. So, um, again, I'm sure it'll get better throughout the course of the series. But I want to see these coaches go at it. All right. Uh, that's enough. I hopefully is back to daily because I, I don't want to talk about eight series. <laughs> I don't want to talk about eight series in one video again, even though, again, there's like three of them I didn't even mention. Because what, what do you want me to say? What do you want me to say? The Celtics did their thing. The Grizzlies are taking care of business. I'm sorry. The Nuggets are taking care of business. Mikael Bridges is really good. Um, but for not, you know what I'm saying? All right, I'll see y'all tomorrow.